So today we're gonna take a look at what's gonna happen if the French colonial empire reunites in the modern day. Now this is not the first French colonial empire. This is the French colonial empire from 1919 to 1939. And as we can see here, pretty much all of West Africa is under the French control. Alongside with Madagascar, of course the French Indochina, some coastal cities in India, as well as New Caledonia. So yeah, let's see what happens if the French empire reunites in the modern day. Let's see who they declare war on, how they expand and all those other stuff but before we get into this video i want to talk about my new youtube channel where from now on i'll be uploading more territorial.io as well as age of history 2 videos you guys can also join the discord server via the link in the description but now let's get right into the video now as we can see here the french colonial empire is pretty big france itself is pretty small in comparison to its empire and what happens if the empire is too big you guessed it rebellions and right after the french colonial empire comes back there is going to be a huge rebellion pop up in Indochina and this rebellion is mainly coming from Vietnam. We can see that the Vietnamese rebellion were able to take Hanoi which was their capital city and they're supported by the people all over from the country and more and more rebellions start to pop up. We can see that the main army is now pushing down the coast meeting up with these rebellious troops and up in the north they're pushing around securing more and more regions. The southern rebellious groups now push up meeting up with the main army but after all of this chaos we can see that the French Empire now decides to give Vietnam its independence. So yeah, let's see. And yeah, thus we can see that Vietnam got its independence and this was a huge blow to the French Empire as Vietnam was one of the main regions. And more importantly, this rebellion would motivate the other rebellious forces to rebel against the French Empire when the French Empire is looking very vulnerable. And quite unfortunately for the French Empire, they're gonna have to face another rebellion which obviously is going to come from Algeria because the Algerians and the French have a very bad history with each other. So yeah, we can see that the Algerians have rebelled against the French Empire and they've taken all these regions near their capital city and they start to push around the coast. Eventually, we can see that most of the northern coast is taken and these rebellions now push down and the French Empire is unable to defeat these guys because someone might be funding them from another country. So yeah, eventually we can see that all of these important parts of Algeria are retaken and once again, the French Empire has no other choice but to give the Algerians their independence because their economy is in ruins right now due to having such a large empire and as of right now they have not stabilized the economy the military or anything so yeah let's see and now it seems like the french empire is going to fall apart but now comes one leader who is very capable now i just want the french empire to not fall apart because it's their video so yeah a new leader comes and this new leader is very capable and he is also given full control of the entire empire so that he can stabilize the situation and there are news that some of these african African countries also want their independence so yeah this guy takes 10 to 15 years in order to stabilize the country and with that he has also stabilized the entire empire all the rebellious forces are crushed the economy is doing better and the people are also happy so yeah now after all of these years the French Empire finally has the time to go on military campaigns and since they have a good economy now and they also have the people's support we can see that the French Empire is now recruiting troops from all over the country and the first country that they want to invade is going to be very obvious and that country is going to be Western Sahara. Now they want to declare war on Western Sahara because of a very major reason. After the independence of Algeria, the French were not connected via land here and that made it very difficult for transportation and stuff. So yeah, you gotta get rid of Western Sahara. Now because Western Sahara does not have a good military or any military at all, we can see that they immediately lost their capital city. The remaining parts just go ahead and surrender and later on we can see that all of Western Sahara got completely annexed and now the French Empire in Africa is connected via land which is pretty good but yeah anyways now the French Empire wants to focus in the east and they're looking forward to have a very strategic location basically they want control over the Malacca Strait and since the Malacca Strait is controlled by Malaysia this kind of happens I mean it is controlled by two countries here but anyways we can see that the French make a naval landing on the eastern coast of the western parts of Malaysia wow that was really difficult to say but anyways we can see that this army pushes in and they eventually were able to capture Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia, which leads them out of this war. And later on, we can see that all of these parts of Malaysia were completely annexed and these are the remaining parts of Malaysia. Now that's a huge strategic location for the French. And now with both these military campaigns being a complete success, we can now see that the French want to focus on Europe. But yeah, by this time, we can see that the French Empire has one of the best militaries in the world, probably the fourth strongest military right behind China and ahead 
out of India. They also have a very good navy, which might be the second best navy in the world, right after the US navy. So yeah. Anyways, in order to expand in Europe, we can see that they declare war on Belgium, Luxembourg, as well as the Netherlands. Yeah, three countries at the same time. They are that confident. But anyways, let's see. We can see that Luxembourg falls within a day, and the French troops now push into Belgium. We can see that the French navy comes into action, as they make a naval landing in the northern parts of the Netherlands, and now they are pushing towards Amsterdam. Eventually, we can see that the French troops were able to take Brussels, which was the capital of Belgium, which leads Belgium out of this war. And now the Dutch are fighting a two-front war. We can see that eventually both these armies were able to get to Amsterdam, and the Battle of Amsterdam ends in a decisive French victory. And with that, the remaining parts of the Netherlands also go ahead and surrender. And later on, we can see that all of these countries got completely annexed by the French Empire. Now the French Empire keeps on recruiting more and more troops. They keep on making their economy better, their military better, and they're not stopping here. As they are a very strong empire now, and they want more and more victories in Europe. And now they want to go on another major military campaign, for which now we can see that the French Empire is recruiting troops from all over the empire, and it seems like they are ready for their military campaign. Also the UK is kicked out of Gibraltar. Don't know when that happened, but that happened. And now we can see that the French declare war on Spain for their territorial expansion and also to connect these lands. I don't know if it's that important, but they want to expand. And now things are not looking good for Spain. We can see that the African French army now pushes into Spain from the southern parts and they have secured all of these regions. And we can see that another French army pushes in from the eastern parts and eventually all of Catalonia is under the French control. The French navy also comes into action as they take out these islands, also making a naval landing in the eastern parts of Spain and the French Navy makes another landing in the northwestern parts of Spain. Eventually the main army pushes down, meeting up with these troops. The African troops now push around, securing all of the southern coastline and they also meet up with the main army. Though the troops here are pushed out, the Spanish are losing ground to the French because of being heavily outnumbered and now we can see that one army is pushing towards Madrid. So yeah, let's zoom in. We can see that most of the Spanish army is defending Madrid right now and the French army now has besieged all of Madrid. We can see that the troops are exchanging fire, but the troops in Madrid are heavily outnumbered and the French are encroaching every day. We can see that the Spanish army finally comes out of the city to fight a pitched battle. So yeah, now let's take a look at this battle. Now because the Spanish are heavily outnumbered, we can see that the French were easily able to outflank them, most of the Spanish troops just surrender, and the battle ends in a decisive French victory. And with the fall of their capital city, we can see that the remaining parts of Spain just go ahead and surrender, and this was a decisive victory for the French Empire, as they took out one of the strongest countries in the world. And in a peace negotiation, we can see that all of Spain got completely annexed by the French Empire. But yeah, as of now, the French Empire has expanded in a very good manner, but but to finish off their invasions, they have one final country to invade and that country is going to be Norway. And now things are not looking good for Norway as they're simply not capable of defending themselves from the French Empire who is the second strongest country in the world right now, arguably. But yeah, still, let's see. Immediately we can see that the French Navy comes into action as they make a naval landing on the eastern sides of Oslo and they eventually were able to take out the capital city of Norway. And at this point, if they surrender early, the French might be a little generous towards them. So yeah, we can see that the remaining parts of Norway just surrender. And yeah, as the Norwegians expected, we can see that the French felt a little generous as they did not completely annex all of Norway. But yeah, this is the French Empire at its peak. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and tell me what you guys want to see in the future. And thank you for watching.